good morning and thanks, Lindsay, for kicking us off. I'm Amy Barnhart. I'm the Director of Financial Aid here at Wittenberg, and I'm so pleased that all of you could join us this morning. Um, we're coming into the home stretch on the financial aid uh, process. Um, as, you're, as you've been navigating the college bound process, the financial aid process has, you know, kind of been going right along as well. So we're hitting that home stretch. So here in a couple of weeks, you'll be really starting to get into the final things that you do um, um, as a new student coming to Wittenberg or as a currently enrolled student um, at Wittenberg. We'll be finishing things up before we start the billing process. If you would like, you can also check out our other webinars that we've recorded along the way. They are at wittenberg.edu backslash FA webinars. Um, and we will also have one final one coming up at the end of June, right before we send out those fall billing statements. So hopefully that's a just in time webinar for you. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. This webinar will help you um, actually start to accept your student loans, your work study awards within our self-service portal. Um, this is honestly the next step in that financial aid journey. Um, and, and if you're pl not planning to borrow loans, this will also help you reject those loans um, if you do not plan to borrow. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to do a quick refresher of what your financial aid award letter looks like because it helps to contextualize all of the processes as we go along. So if you recall, when you received your award letter from Wittenberg, the very top piece of that um, letter talked about your financial aid and the bottom provided you with an estimated out-of-pocket cost. So we want you to take this into consideration as you're making your financing decisions as we're coming down that home stretch again. So you can pay those out-of-pocket costs at the bottom um, by paying your balance outright. We, you can use your 529 plan if you've if you've been contributing to one along the way. We also have payment plans available and you'll learn about those in our June webinar as well. Um, there are other loan options, a parent loan, private loans, um, and parent private loans, oddly enough. Just to give you an idea of the two different types of loans that show up, may show up on every student award letter, subsidized loans and unsubsidized loans. They're both federal direct loans funded fully by the U.S. Department of Education um, through taxpayer money, um, but there are two different types. The subsidized means the interest, it is interest-free while the student is in school. There's no interest accruing on that loan. It's literally just a principal balance while that student is in school. You have to file the FAFSA to get either loan, but you have to have financial need in order to get a subsidized loan. Um, and there's also a grace period. Once the student graduates or leaves school, there's a six month grace period where it's still interest free. But once that six month grace period is over with, the student starts paying and interest begins accruing on that subsidized loan. The unsubsidized portion is not based on financial need and interest begins to accrue as soon as all of that money comes to Wittenberg. So during that spring semester, we recommend that students pay that interest while they're in school, at least during the summer. Let's say you get a summer job and your interest that's accrued on that unsubsidized loan is $500 from that academic year. That's a really easy way to save yourself a lot of money after you graduate is by paying that interest at least once a year, paying it down to your, your principal balance and, and just moving forward from there. Many of our students do that. They take a portion of their summer work and they pay off that uh, interest balance to keep it just at a even keel principal balance um, on that unsubsidized portion. Now, this is kind of funky right now because as you know, all student loans have been in a payment moratorium, but interest has been accruing as well. So there's some talk on um, removing interest that's accrued so far. We don't know what that future is gonna look like um, on those uh, federal direct loans, when repayment will, be, will start up again, when interest um, will be taken off the table. We have no idea. We're learning as much as you are um, when the headlines hit the news. So now we start the actual accepting or rejecting of those loans. The first step is logging into our self-service portal. New students should be receiving their self-service portal um, credentials and access 
within the next week, we just rolled all of your records into our student information system. So now our IT folks are working on getting you that access. Hopefully within the next week to 10 days, you'll get access into self-service. So this webinar is actually just in time for you to take action on your student loans and your work. So you'll log into self-service by going to selfservice.wittenberg.edu. There are two links on this, um, on this particular slide that when you get the copy of this webinar, the PDF copy, they're active links, so you can click on them. We do have a, a video to help you kind of maneuver through self-service a little bit easier. And we also have a step-by-step -step guide on how to handle self-service moving forward. Now, keep in mind, if you have not deposited to Wittenberg, You've basically not raised your hand, paid us that 400 bucks and said, yes, I'm going to be a Wittenberg Tiger this coming fall. You won't get access to self-service. You won't get access to the housing portal to select your residence hall, that kind of thing. So if you haven't done that, make sure to do that soon so you can stay on track and get things done um, before we have those billing statements go out after orientation. So keep that in mind. So I'm gonna, the next slide is actually gonna show you how to log in step-by-step, step, the different pieces of the directions I just shared with you. So you'll go to the Wittenberg website, wittenberg.edu. And in that top right-hand corner, you'll click on the little uh, lines that say menu beside them. A drop-down menu will come open and you'll see self-service down there in the bottom left-hand corner. You'll click on that self-service and you'll use your Wittenberg email address and the password you have chosen for that email address to log in. Now remember, we have two-factor authentication here at Wittenberg. So what you'll have to also do is make sure you have your cell phone handy so you can then do that two-factor authentication to go into self-service. Um, if you haven't set up two-factor two authentication, while wow, that is a mouthful on a Saturday morning. Ooh. Anyway, if you haven't set that up, I highly encourage you to do so because you will be using that often when you try to log into Moodle. If you have an online component to your classes, um, every campus portal has two-factor authentication. So keep that in mind. So once you've logged in, you get a home screen and there will be, oh, eight to 10 different places that you can choose um, to review. There's a registration section, there's financial aid, there's student accounts, it's called student finance within self-service and a few other little bells and whistles. So let's just say you've selected the financial aid menu. This is what it looks like. This is your home screen in financial aid. And I know this is small on your computer screens as this is a presentation, but this is just to give you a flavor of what to expect when you log in. Keep in mind, the black box is actually going to be where your student information appears. I've redacted the student that I'm using as a test student. So I didn't want to share her picture, her ID or anything like that within self-service. So picture yourself in that black box. And that's what you'll see when you log into financial aid self-service. The first thing you're going to do is select the appropriate academic year. In this case, because you're starting in fall 22, you will select the summer 22 through spring 23 academic year. So this is your homepage. You can kind of get a, a glimpse of what's offered here. It gives you a little bit of a checklist um, optional information along the right-hand side is a menu of additional links to get more information. So we have a lot of information on this screen for you. The next screen is your financial aid required documents. So if we're still waiting on information from you, it'll show up here. It'll say, do we need your tax information? And it'll say incomplete um, or required. Um, do, are we still waiting on a verification worksheet from you? It'll show up here and you can actually submit documents from this screen as well. Each of these will have like a little hyperlink where if you click on it, you can attach a document and it goes right straight to us immediately. So it's actually really awesome. And it's a secure way to share information with us moving forward. So keep that in mind as you maneuver through financial aid for the next academic year at Wittenberg, you'll be able to access self-service all the time and send us information directly. It is fantastic. So let's look at your financial aid. That's the next screen. 
Your financial aid awards are broken into three components, your scholarships and grants, your loans, and then you have a work award at the bottom, maybe. But it also shows you how much of your financial aid package is scholarships and grants, how much of it is made up of loans, and all of that good stuff. So anything listed in green means it's ready to go. You don't have to do anything to tell us that you want that financial aid. That means you're good to go. Just let it go. We'll take it from here. Anything in yellow means you have to take action. And that yellow line, so in this case, for this particular student, her loan is still pending. She has to tell us whether she wants to borrow that loan or not. So as you can see on that yellow stripe where it says unsubsidized loan, underneath unsubsidized loan, you'll see a little carrot, an upside down carrot, and it says accept or decline. So what you do is you click on that carrot and on the next screen, it expands. You can actually see um, for the terms, so fall and spring semester, the loan will, will be ready for your student or for you as the student, and you can accept or reject. So you'll also see as a student, when you accept or reject or accept or decline the loan, you'll, the buttons will actually be in color. You'll have a blue button for accept, and I believe it's a, a lighter blue color for decline. If you'd like to accept, all you have to do is click accept and we take it from here. We will begin processing that loan for you. But what happens is as soon as you click accept and this is the first loan you've had at Wittenberg, a new box appears right directly below and it will be called your loan. Um, I think it's like a loan checklist, but let's go on to the next slide and I'll show you. After you accept your loans, it'll say loan requirements checklist. So it'll show two things that you need to do. Complete your direct loan entrance counseling and your master promissory note. Once those are completed, then that loan on your award actually turns green because that means it's ready for Wittenberg to take over and get the processes done for you. So make sure you complete the acceptance on self-service, and then you complete your entrance counseling and promissory note, and we will take it from there and make sure that loan is ready to pay to your student account to pay off that bill. It's really not hard to do your entrance counseling or promissory note. It actually takes about 45 minutes to an hour at studentaid.gov. You'll actually get information here um, in a week or two on taking care of those things as well. We want you to make sure you have those ready to go by the time you come here for summer orientation. So we'll send you a copy of your award letter and the directions for completing all of these steps yet again, um, probably around June 9th or 10th, you'll get that letter or we'll send that letter out to you. So right before you come to Wittenberg for orientation, you'll get that information. So the next steps is to talk about the federal direct plus loan. The federal direct plus loan is not going to appear in self-service until we process the loan here at Wittenberg. So students, if your parents plan to borrow a loan, they have to complete the loan process first and they'll actually get information on how to take care of those processes during summer orientation. We give them an instruction sheet that says, okay, here are your 10 steps to completing the parent loan process. They log into studentaid.gov um, and, and get those things started. Once we've processed the loan, it'll show up as a loan within self-service um, underneath the direct student loans. So keep that in mind. Um, parents, if you're joining us this morning, you are the borrower of that loan. Um, you, you can pay on the interest while your student is in school, which I highly recommend that you do because interest capitalizes um, once your student, any interest earned on that loan capitalizes once your student graduates or leaves school. So think about that. Um, you can choose to completely defer the whole thing while your student is in school, but keep in mind that interest is still accruing on that loan um, for one to four years, however you decide to handle it. However, if there's something that happens and the parent is denied the credit for that loan, students can borrow an additional 4,000 for their freshman and sophomore years and 5,000 for junior and senior year um, on that unsubsidized portion of their direct student loans. So that's one way to help bridge that gap, but it still may leave the student short. There are fees. So if you plan to borrow a parent loan, you might have to borrow just a, 
a little tiny bit more to cover what that balance is. Otherwise, you could be short and have to pay us a little bit of extra money. Um, again, you go to studentaid.gov to start the application process. The private loans, they do not show up on self-service right away either until we actually process those loans. We will be handing out um, information about private loans during orientation as well. There's a little to-do sheet that says, here's where you go. Here's how you complete those loan processes. But keep in mind, all private loans are based on credit. You have to be credit worthy to borrow these loans. And most every single solitary one of them require the student borrower to have a cosigner. So the cosigner has to be credit worthy. Interest rates and fees vary by lender, um, but you can defer them. You can defer both the interest and the, the principal balance while the student is in school. Again, we'll give you more information on how to complete that application process as we go through summer orientation. In fact, we will have a special parent session during orientation this year, right after you eat lunch. And yes, you'll see my face as soon as you're done eating lunch and you'll be like, oh my goodness. But anyhow, we will have about a 30 minute presentation about how you handle the finish, the final financing of the, the first year, and then how you go about handling the billing processes. We will then represent that all the information all to you in our June webinar. So you have that resource right before you need to start making those big decisions. So we don't expect you to do anything right this very second, but around orientation, we need you to start making those decisions and thinking about, okay, here's how we're going to finance year one at Wittenberg. And of course, we're always here to answer your questions. So you're going to get a copy of this presentation via email. This has live links in it. So the next slide I'm going to show you is a list of all of the links that will really truly make a difference in you finishing all of financing for year one. So if you just need a tinge of advice about financial aid, log into our website. There's a ton of information there. Um, to complete the entrance counseling and master promissory note, it's right at studentaid.gov. That link, the number two link on this particular sheet, will provide you with the direct link into studentaid.gov to get those two processes started. The Parent PLUS loan application is also at studentaid.gov. We've provided you with a direct link. Payment plan information and making a one-time payment is also available here. But again, you're going to get more in-depth information during orientation. And I highly recommend that families meet with us during orientation too. So if you have any last minute questions or concerns or have a process you still need to complete, we can help you. We can get that finished. And again, we will be presenting all of this again to you in June when, it re when the rubber really hits that road um, before the billing comes out. Bills do go out here um, from Wittenberg for the fall semester, um, early July. So right around July 6th, the bills will go out. They are electronic billing. We don't mail paper bills. Um, they will also be in self-service this year. So you will be able to log into self-service, see the bill and financial aid in all in one place. As a matter of fact, on the billing side, of self-service, you'll get a little piece of the financial aid puzzle there too. So it's all right there in one place for you. And we're really excited for families this year because this is the first time in Wittenberg history that the bill and financial aid literally are located in one place. We've been toting along with different portals for a long, long time. And so we're so happy that families now have access to one location to th uh, finish things out. So if you have questions, contact us this week. We're happy to help you. Our direct phone line is 937-327-7321. And you can always email us as well at financial-aid at wittenberg.edu. Our office op is open from 830 to 4 during the summer months. Um, we go back to our regular office hours when school starts. So we get a little, little break um, during the summer months. So, all right. So that is the end of the presentation. Let me stop sharing so Lindsay can ask me any questions that you all have put in the chat. And you're on mute, Lindsay. <laughs> there are no questions in the chat right now. Okay. Right. Let's give a couple seconds here if people are typing anything or if anyone wants to type. 
Oh, can we get the presentation via email? Yes. Um, and I'm not, I don't, I don't know the exact timing because I'm not the person that does it. If it'll be today or if it'll be Monday, early next week, yes, we will send the presentation. Mm -hmm. Yep, early next week, we generally email them out. And, and for then, anyone who joined late, this will be posted on our website. Yeah, yeah, we post the web, we post the recording of this presentation um, literally right after one week or so. Um, we do some editing before we post it to make sure there's nothing crazy out there for you. <laughs> Any questions? I know it's a it's going to be a beautiful Saturday morning or afternoon wherever you're joining us from. So hopefully we're able to help you today. Oh, great. Here's one. Is it possible to accept work study but not a federal loan? Absolutely. So they're not mutually exclusive. You can you can accept one and not the other. They, you, there are acceptance processes for each of the loans and for the work. And there's also a handy dandy button that says accept them all if you want them all. Anyone else? Well, okay, well, okay. you all have been a, oh, here we go. Can I speak more about work study? Yes, so work study is a program where students can work on campus, but the US Department of Education actually gives us a little bit of money on to pay the wages. But that doesn't mean, if, if work study doesn't appear on your um, financial aid award, that does not mean you can't work at Wittenberg. All full-time students at Wittenberg can work here. We want you to work on campus because it's great work experience. We have jobs from giving tours in our admission team, and that is a highly sought after um, position on campus, to working in financial aid, to working up in our athletics facilities for coaches. We have a ton of jobs, and we have jobs for every kind of student as well. It's not just all dedicated to our upper class students. Freshmen can have a job here on campus. In fact, we encourage you to do so. So you will get information on working um, on campus when you arrive here, um, when you move in in August. You'll also get information on how to apply for jobs starting in late June. Okay. Amy, one of the questions was, how do I accept work study? You will do that um, in the self-service portal. When you click the little downward carrot, you will see um, how to accept or decline that award. Um, Todd asked, should portal login have two, one for parent and one for student? So we will be opening up parent proxy in around early August. And that is when the parents will actually get credentials based on students allowing their parents to have access to that. So students actually have to provide approval for their parents moving forward um, to have access to their student record because of FERPA. FERPA is the Family Education Right to Privacy Act. So students have to authorize parents moving forward to have access. In proxy for parents, you, your student can say, yes, I want them to have access to my financial aid. I want them to see the bill, but I don't want to, them to see my loan or my grades or whatever. The student can say, I can give, they can have access to it all or they can have access to nothing. So it, it, it's a wide variety. Your student chooses. So that's probably a good conversation point between parents and students now on what you expect as far as information sharing. Are students guaranteed hours for work study so they reach their work study aid amount? Okay, so the aid amount is not really an amount. It is just how much a student can work on campus if they choose to work. They can actually earn more than the $2,500 that is on their, um, uh, their financial aid package. Um, it's just basically a placeholder. So hours vary by student and who and, and their schedule and what they're participating on campus. Most students work six to 10 hours a week. If they're student athletes, they may not work while they're in season 
but off season, it's completely up to the student how much they plan to work. Keep in mind, work study and student work do not go towards the bill. Your student actually earns a paycheck for every hour that they work. So they can choose whether they put that money towards their billing statement or they get the paycheck to live on. So there's no guarantee of hours. It is completely between the student and their supervisor on how many hours they'd like to work each week. With a cap of, I believe it's 18 hours a week. During the academic year, yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Skylar, I believe that also answered your question about how many hours do you need for work aid? Amy had answered that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We have students that work maybe two hours a week, if that's what their schedule permits, up to the 18 hours. So <laughs> it's a wide variety. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I think we've answered all the questions this morning. I appreciate your time and, and joining us this morning. Again, this presentation will be um, saved to our website. We will also be sending you a copy of the PDF presentation so you can click on those links should you want them. If you have additional questions, always feel free to call either admissions or financial aid. We're happy to help you through this uh, very end of that financial aid journey. So. With that being said, have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye, everyone.